Hi there folks and welcome to this tutorial on using an individually adjustable LED strip. The individually adjustable LED strip is really a kind of a paradigm shift in LED lighting because now with the LED strip it's really easy to control hundreds or thousands of LEDs without soldering them together yourself. They're already soldered together into this strip and the data cascades through the LEDs from one to another, making it really easy to program as well. If you have a look closely at this guy, you can see the little uh, LED package, which actually involves its own LED driver chip. So it's actually a, a microchip hiding right under this LED, which takes the signals and turns it into red, green, and um, blue values for the three diodes in each of these LEDs. Now, I'm not gonna pretend to be a master of the inner workings of that driver chip, but the only pertinent thing you really need to know is that a very nice person named Daniel Garcia has gone ahead and made what's called Library, which is a collection of pre-written Arduino code that makes using this strip as easy as using the digital write function that we were using to control the single green LED. So things are about to get ores of magnitude more interesting. Okay, so I wanted to show you how I have this wired up. I'm using these wires with an alligator clip on one side and a jumper on the other side. And I'm attaching it to these three little copper contacts. And those are marked for ground, five volts, and data. So I'm using red for the five volts, black for the ground, and yellow for the data. These are both plugged back to the spots marked five volt and ground. And this one is plugged into the pin that I'm planning on using for the data, which is the pin eight. Okay, so go to File, Examples, Fast LED, Blink. Let's have a look at this first line here, which is include fastled.h. If you have installed this library according to the instructions I gave, this is just going to tell um, the development environment to go ahead and include that library with the upload to the controller. So the next line, define NumLEDs 26. Well, the uninteresting part of this is that a variable called NumLEDs is being set to 26. The interesting part is the syntax here. This pound define means that this value will never change. It can't change. And these pound defines can only be used up at the very header of this document. The next one is our define data pin. If you bought the LED strips uh, like that I told you to, they're a three-wire interface. The three wires are the power, the ground, and the data. So we're just saying which pin on our Arduino we want to be the data. This clock pin is related um, to uh, LED strips uh, that are four-wire and need a clock pin. So that's irrelevant to us. We can leave it at 13. Uh, this next line is pretty interesting. Um, CRGB LEDs num LEDs. So what's happening here? These square brackets indicate that there's going to be an array. An array is a number uh, of elements of the same type. So the type here is CRGB. This is the same, um, you know, a data type is like a, a type like an int, or in this case a CRGB. Um, the CRGB stores three numbers between 0 and 255. So in our setup, there's this... Uh, we're going to initialize the LED strip in, in this line right here, and you can see he's put in a whole bunch of these lines for um, different strips. So go ahead and comment this one out, and uncomment, um, in my case, I'm using a WS2011, so I'm going to uncomment this. Um, but I happen to know that the channels are flipped on this strip, so in this color order, I'm going to put in GRB. Okay, um, so down here in our loop, what we're looking at here is this is our LEDs array, and the value at index 0, so the first value in the array, is getting set to CRGB red. Now, red here is something that's built in to the fast LED library. He's gone ahead and included a bunch of commonly used colors. So this next line is fast LED show. And fast LED show sets the LEDs on the strip according to the value stored in the array. 
the pixel doesn't get set right when you set it in the array because maybe you want to set multiple pixels in the array before you push them all at the same time. Okay, next line delay, we're comfortable with that. In the next line, it takes the same LED zero and sets it back to black. So here's where we're getting our on-off uh, blink behavior. Okay, so that's all well and good, but it's only blinking the first LED on the strip, which corresponds to this first position in the array. So to make it blink all the strips, what we can do is iterate through this array using something called a for loop. And a for loop repeats a segment of code a number of times, and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so this for loop, what I'm saying here is there's an int called i which is equal to zero. While i is less than num LEDs, which we set up at the top, i++. plus plus. So this loop is going to run one time for every LED we have, and each time it runs, the value of i is going to go up by one. So the way we can use this is let's copy in and paste in this uh, line right here which sets an LED and instead of setting the zeroth LED, I'm going to set the ith LED. And since the value of i changes every time this loop gets run, we're going through every position in the array. And just um, for clarity and to teach you a little bit about digital color here, I'm going to get rid of where it says red, and I'm going to show you uh, the correct way to make a CRGB of any color, and that is to open paren, and then type in your color values, in a 0 to 255 scale. So maybe I'll type in something like 12, 144, 201. And this is going to be a bluish color because uh, blue is our highest value. And so I can get rid of this. And this is what I was talking about before about the difference between setting it in the array and actually doing the show. Here we want to make sure we've got all these set to the color before we turn them all on at once. Okay, so I'm going to copy and paste this down here to where we were setting the first LED to black and set them we want to be setting them to black so we're gonna zero out all these values which is off or black okay so that's how you can iterate through an array of LEDs okay so I wanted to go through with you guys a simple rainbow pattern I wrote called simple hue and the download for this is going to be in the description so our first two lines up here are exactly as you would think. Uh, our third line defining the data pin to pin 8. I love pin 8. CRGB LEDs A should be familiar with this. Here I'm bringing in a new data type. Remember data types are stuff like this, like the CRGB or the int. And the float is just used when you're dealing with um, numbers with decimal places like this, and I chose to go with the decimal place here just so I could get a very high degree of accuracy and calculate some very smooth fades. Um, right here, this is a pretty interesting line because instead of setting this int num stops to just a value, we're setting it equal to an expression here. So the value of num stops is going to be equal to whatever this math here comes out to. So I'm calling the round function, which means whatever is inside these parentheses is going to get rounded so, and then what's inside the parentheses is 360, and that's the number of stops on the hue wheel, divided by num LEDs. And so, this is so that one rainbow is going to fit perfectly across our strip, no matter what length your strip is. You could set num LEDs to whatever you want, and because this num stops isn't set in stone, but gets calculated, it, it's going to calculate the stops for you. And you'll see what the stops are in a sec. So um, in our setup, this might be new to you, this LEDs.setBrightness. This is a really great feature that the uh, author of this library put in. It takes a value from between 0 and 255 and remaps um, all the brightness of any of the colors that you set the strips to um, you know, the correct brightness here. And it's also gamma adjusted for the uh, chip type and also for the human eye. 
So it's really amazing for him to put that in there for us. I'm going to go ahead and take a closer look at this uh, initializer for the LEDs object. So inside these angular brackets, first we got our WS2811, which is our, you know, chipset. The, the next little arg here is our data pin, which is data pin 8, and then the next is our, is our wiring. Um, GRB order if you're using WS2011 or WS2812 or 12B. So then inside the paren, we got LEDs A, which is the pointer to the array that this LED object is going to use up here. That's our uh, CRGB array that we made, size of num LEDs, and then the num LEDs on the strip, num LEDs. This uh, mem set is just going to set all the LEDs in our array to zero. Okay, so it zeroes it all out, so that we know that we have a blank canvas going into the loop. In our loop, here you can see uh, you know our standard iterator for loop. What's interesting is what's inside this iterator for loop. So we're setting an LED the ILED to uh, a color HSV. And now you might be thinking, you know, how is this color HSV going to work in our color RGB array? That's another amazing thing about this library is the blazingly fast and accurate HSV to RGB calculation it does. So here we can put in our color using these three arguments in a hue saturation value color space. So our saturation and our value are both 255 because we want the color, no bullshit, but here, you know, we're doing another little expression. So we're timesing I by num stops, and the stop here is basically um, the, the amount of hue change between each LED based on the number of LEDs in the strip. And then plus I hue. I hue here is going to be our hue offset, which keeps the strip changing colors. So after we set that LED, we're going to set, we're going to offset our offset by adding this plus equals means add the second value to the first. We add I step to I hue. So now our offset has gone from zero, as it was initially declared at the top, to 0 0.01. Um, I put in this uh, if I hue equals 255 here to set it back to zero to handle the case where it wraps around. So hue of 255 is red, hue of zero is red, and that's how we can smoothly fade through the rainbow over and over again. Um, after it set all the LED LEDs, we have a delay, and then a show, and then it returns to the beginning.